Penshift equal, it's saying like if, well in this case, if register 3 is equal to 2, we're going to branch to another section of code. But if it's not equal to 2, then it just ignores this instruction and just keeps going. So, let's see, I think I have some more examples here that I want to go over. Um, the first one is LWZ, which stands for load word and zero. Um, so, again, the, the, the first thing that, the first register that we specify, this is the register being affected, so we are loading into register three, and this, this uh, instruction loads a value for memory. So if something's stored in memory and we want to load it into a register and manipulate it, um, maybe check if it's equal to something or whatever, then we would um, use the load word and zero command to load some value into register three. In this case, we are loading... How do I explain this? R6, in this case, does not hold a value, it holds like a pointer. It holds like a, a memory address. So well, let, let me just put up notepad real quick. So suppose like, suppose at R6 we have like something like that. So that's like, that's what's stored in R6. So when we say this, it's looking at the address stored at R6 so in this case it's this address so it goes to address 805A 7D00 and it loads into register 3 the value that is at an offset of 40 from that address so this looks at this actually looks at the address 805A 7D40 and whatever value is stored here is loaded into R3. Does that make enough sense? So if, if I had like a... if I had a value stored somewhere in memory that I wanted to... Um, that I wanted to access, I would first have to set a register, in this case like register 6 that I have here, I would have to set a register to this value and have it point to that spot in memory, and then I would have to say load from, from that spot. So anyway, back to the slideshow. Um, oh, and it's load word in zero, LWZ, because um, it also, like, it zeroes out the, re it, it clears the register, like, before loading the value in there. So if you have something previously stored in the register, it just clears it away and then puts, yeah, it's, that, that's not important, it's pretty much implied. Um, but anyway, the, the next instruction is STW, this is store word, um, and this is just the exact same thing except you are storing a value instead of loading one. So in this case you are taking the value whatever is at R3 and you are storing it into the address at R7. In this case the offset is zero so like the address is just specified directly by by register 7 and you're storing R3 into that address. Um, the next instruction is LIS, which means load immediate and shift. Now we already went over, um, oh let me see, we already went over load immediate, which basically just loads a value to a register. In this case you're loading two to register three. Uh, load immediate and shift is very similar, except the value that you specify, in this case I'm specifying 805A in hex, which I specify with 0x. Um, I'm loading it into register 31, but instead of, let me just, so that's our instruction, 
So this puts into R31. Um, if this was LI, load immediate, then R31 would become this. That would be R31. But this is load immediate and shift. And what that does is it loads it and shifts it to the left. So R31 actually becomes that. It takes the value and it shifts it to the, the left half. Um, because the instruction, like, doesn't have room to specify, like, you, you can't do something like this. That doesn't fit in one instruction. You can only specify, like, four, four digits. Um, so if you want to, like, go to that address, then you'd have to do that uh, to load what you see above, 805A, 0000. And then you'd have to do something like... And that would add this to, or sorry, 0x. Th that would add that amount to R31, so you would end up with that. So, and we, in doing this, we haven't touched the actual game memory, we're just messing with the registers. When I do like load immediate, um, that's not touching the game memory in any way. The game memory is only touched when we do like when we do um, a load function and a store function. And th there's like other there's other functions that affect the game memory as well. Like there are a ton of stuff that I don't have listed here. There are lots and lots of processor instructions, most of which you'll never touch. Um, but there's a lot of them. I'm just saying. So the the next thing is BL, which is branch and link. Um, so back here we talked about branching already, like branch of equal, and branching, it jumps to another line of code basically. So if you ever use like go to in like basic or something, it branches over to another line of code. In this case it branches to the line that's this far away from where we currently are. Um, so when we see branch and link, that's the same thing. It, it's branching to a line of code that, say it's this, this far away, OX484. We're branching to a line of code that's that far away, but we're linking. And that basically, in, in layman's terms, it means it's remembering where we are in code right now. So it remembers that we started here, we're jumping somewhere else. So chances are we're, we're branching to another like function or something it's going to execute that function and then at the end of the function it's going to have this instruction right here blr this stands for branch to the link register but it's easier to think about in layman's terms as standing for branch link return because what it does most of the time is whatever value was like whatever line this is at we branch to another function we run that function and then we hit this line blr and it returns back to where we were before. You'll see this, like once I start going through code, you'll see examples of this. And it'll make a lot of sense. So we're going to do that. Let's load my stuff up. Uh, got my dolphin. Let me get up my notes, because I don't remember what I'm doing. So the next code that we're going to write is we're actually going to modify the game's uh, assembly code. Um, we're going to find the line of code that says, in, in Melee, um, we're going to find the line of code that says, when you die, subtract a stock. And we're going to change that so that when you die, it's actually going to add a stock instead. So let me load up Melee. where we have uh, Link and Dr. Mario with seven stocks each. Um, and the first thing I want to do is I want to go into Dolphin's menu. I don't think you can see the menu up here, but I'm going to click on Symbols and Generate Symbol Map. 
and this basically just makes things colorful for us. So we can tell like the sep what the separation of functions are. You see this function is blue, this one's like salmon colored, this one's like lavender, etc. So it's it, it makes things much prettier and like easier to manage. And the other useful thing in doing this is you can actually name functions too. So if I know what this function does, which I don't by the way, I just like randomly went to this function. If I knew what it does, I could right click it and rename symbol and I could rename it to like just what it whatever it does. Do that thing. Um and now it has a name here. And um you can explore this stuff with Uh, the, the window is too small for me to show you, but like, you can actually explore like the functions that you've named. Um, so it's really great to like, um, just if you figure out what a function does, you can name it. You can go and you can save your symbol map, um, and you can actually like kind of map out like what the game's functions do. I mean, there's like thousands and thousands of them, so there's no way you're gonna map them all out. Um, but certain useful ones, like we can actually like. Uh, name and, and refer to later if we need to. Um, so anyway, how are we going to find uh, the function that like subtracts stock? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set what's called a breakpoint. <coughs> and a breakpoint basically I, I can set one anywhere I want just by clicking here and it sets a red square. That means when the game's code hits this spot, hits this line, and is going to pause. So I can effectively like make it. I, if I think this function does something like, you know, say I thought this function was the one that like subtracted a stock, I could run off and kill myself, and the game's ex execution would pause when that happens, and I could go through that code. Um, hold on, it'll, it'll make a little more sense in a second. Um, let me see. The first thing that we need to do is, we, we actually already did this before, we need to search for uh, the value that holds player one stock. Um, and we already have that value from before, or at least I do anyway. Um, and that is that, that address. Um, so, essentially, I need to figure out what part of the game's code is going to modify this address. Like, what part of the code writes to this writes to this address, like subtracts a stock and writes to this address. Um, and to do that, I'm going to set what's called a breakpoint. So I actually have to bring up a special debug version of Dolphin for this. Um, to use this feature, you actually need to compile Dolphin yourself. Uh, you can look it up online, but right now I'm just using the Dolphin's like main release executable. So I'm gonna, I'm going to switch over to another instance of Dolphin I have, um, and this is like a special debug compilation. Um, I had to compile this myself um, to enable certain debug features. In this case, um, it's this MC, which stands for memory check or memory breakpoint. But anyway. Um, this is still applicable, so uh, let me load up Melee in this copy of Dolphin. And this one's actually a little bit slower, because it has a bunch of debug features enabled. And it's a little bit buggier, too. Yes or no? Okay. And Dolphin crashed. What else is new? Um, let me just load that back up. Anyway. Let's try this again. try closing this copy of Dolphin. Maybe I just can't have them both loaded at the same time. 